welcome back guys to the next episode of the Final Fantasy 13 2 post game. Today we're doing some more Paradox endings, starting with Awerba 200 AF, the first battle versus Caius. This is, uh, oh, with the odd view of my weapon there. This is the first time we're going to start using one of our fragment skills, the Paradox Scope, to challenge history's possibilities and fight harder versions of previous bosses. As I said, when we got the ability at the end of the normal playthrough, what if scenarios are here? What if we defeated Caius back then? What if we defeated this boss? What if we did this? What if we did that? This is where we get to find out what if. Let's just head over and view the cutscenes leading up to it. <coughs> Looks like an oracle drive. Yeah. Stop. <gasps> Sarah! Possible. If you change the future, you change the past. Uh -huh. It keeps changing? <laughs> Change is the constant. <laughs> Caius. I have seen you. I have seen you both. You? What? You mean Asiris? I am not the you you know. But... You must understand, there are many yous. Caius. Wait, I saw you. My sister was fighting you. What are you doing here in this time? I learned of your journey, leaping back and forth along the timeline. Yule has been watching everything you do. No, she's been watching us? Yes, I see you understand the significance of that. Then you must also understand that I am here for a reason. Your actions have necessitated the strictest sanctions. Paradox scope activated. And the change in the timeline begins. A lot more powerful Caius now. And he put some smack down on me then. I'm not sure if he's got the same kind of HP or anything. He's definitely got different vulnerabilities or something. It's counted as a different monster. But I have buffs and all that I didn't have when first facing him anyway. I have Afro with his two Afros. Afro with his two Afros? Saz, did I just... <laughs> I just called Saz Afro. <laughs> that is a redeeming feature. Oh my god, that's so bad. We're poison on him as well now. Look at his HP drop. We'll be viewing this paradox ending in no time at all. Mind you, Noel has actually been messed up a little bit. Even with those buffs added in, sir, you're going to go down nastily. Not before probably killing Noel, strangely enough. 
quickly, heal no. Kill Caius. Go, go guys, go. Go lightning. You can't win in Valhalla, but you can win here. Whoa, he does damage now when he goes below half HP. As you can see, he got back up again, which he doesn't do in the normal fight. Well, same HP pool again. We're unlocking vulnerabilities. But we've taken away his body and soul debuff or whatever it was. Which gives him the resurrection ability. That's an interesting twist in the fight. Of course, if we were to defeat him, it would be to knock him down twice after all. Considering he always buffs up with that. Let's get the same debuff someone against there. Put some more poison on him. Oh, Sarah, get that. Yes, Sarah's got the poison on. Oh man, he just doesn't like Noel for some reason. Ultima Arrow! Drive that chain gauge up. Time to finish him. With low HP, no, but Meteor Javelin. Can this be some temporal distortion? I love how he said this might be. This must be some kind of temporal distortion for him to lose here. That's a nice touch. Wherever, guess, 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 AF, a crystal maiden is in the frame. In the instant Caius was defeated, the effects rippled down the timeline. In the village of Erba, Sarah and Noel see that things are not as they were before. Twisted mockeries of humans sprawl lifeless among the buildings. The scars of war that should have long since faded appear fresh and raw. Is this the world of the past, or is it the reflection of someone's memory? Sarah hears a faint voice calling her, and sets off to investigate. When we came to, we found ourselves in the town of Erba. We were in a world that had been devastated by the War of Transgression, hundreds of years before I was born. All traces of humanity were replaced with monstrous seeth. People had been stripped of their normal lives. Denied even a human death, they wandered the ruins of their home. I thought I heard a faint whisper, a familiar voice. Could it be the voice of someone who lived here long ago? The voice of someone begging to be heard? The war against Cocoon, it was inevitable. The army of Grand Pulse was annihilated by the overwhelming power of the Falci. Countless lives were lost. But I didn't fight. I couldn't. Not even to protect my friends, the people I love. To hate, to hurt, to destroy. I refused to accept my focus. I was sad. I was scared. That's why I decided to run. I left Fang to deal with everything. We vowed to protect each other, and I broke that promise. I'm the reason. I'm the reason Fang was forced to carry the burden of the monster, of Ragnarok. Because I was weak. Because I abandoned her. Fang, where are you? I have to make up for what I did. Or else... Vanille? Is that you? So the voice you heard before... It belonged to Vanille, Kubo. Vanille, listen. I know what it's like. You're trapped in crystal, but your soul is still alive. You're sleeping, but your thoughts are still awake. I know, because I experienced that too. 
I can feel your pain. I can feel your sorrow, your grief, and your remorse. I know there's someone you want to apologize to. Can you give us some time? I promise we'll find Fang and bring her here, so you can tell her how you feel. Thank you. I know that one day, we'll be released again. Only then can we ask for forgiveness. That is the fate time has in store for us. But fate also brought you here to this place, to hear my plea. All roads are connected, somehow. And they all lead to a time of salvation, when imprisoned souls will be freed. They all lead to the end of the world and a new beginning. It's a pretty sad ending for Vanille there, but it seems to have changed the the whole premise of Final Fantasy XIII in the fact. It was a paradox, I know, but Final Fantasy XIII couldn't really happen if Vanille did what she did. So that's really, really odd. Let's reopen my gate here. And move on to our next paradox ending on the list. Augusta Tower. See you there. Welcome back guys, we're in Augusta Tower 200 AF for our next paradox ending. Yule's right in front of us. Two Yules in like one episode, so let's go see the cutscene again. Yule, are you on your own? I brought you this. Why? What should we do with it? You must protect the timeline. I saw you in Erba. I trust you. I believe in you. We're in the same time as when we met in Erba. So you're the same Yule? Yes. But who are you? Who are the Farseers? I am the Seeress of the oldest tribe on Pulse. My visions of the future are recorded and stored in the Oracle Drive. But that is long in the past. There is no more need to record the prophecies. I have Caius now. What do you mean? He is tasked with protecting the Seeress and remembering her visions. Now and forever, he will remember the entire timeline. Caius. He is beyond death. What? You mean he can't die ever? The Seerus possesses the eyes of Etro, and inside Caius beats the heart of Chaos. The Goddess has gifted him the Curse of Eternity. He is a Guardian, and his mission is to protect the Seerus. The power to see the future is a terrible weapon. It can turn history into chaos. But then... I don't understand. Why are you helping us? I mean, you do know we're trying to change history, right? History has already been broken. The timeline had been twisted before I met you. The distortion leads to a future of death and destruction. If you change the future, you can change the past and correct the distortions. The miracle that saved Cocoon has already been altered. Someone who is meant to survive did not come home. Someone who was meant to survive? You mean my sister? You do, don't you? You're saying that lightning shouldn't have disappeared that day. It was because the future was changed. So if we keep traveling through the gates and resolve all the paradoxes oh. that are happening... Yeah. If you change the future again, the true past will be restored. The past that you still remember, Sarah. Together, the two of you can correct the timeline. Did you hear that, Noel? We've been doing the right thing all along. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us something else? Someone has been laying traps for us inside this tower. Do you know who's behind it? Your enemy. It is here inside the tower. It has generated the contradictions that threaten you. The machine is sentient. 
machine. So the Caius who we met earlier in Academia, he was... An imitation created by the machine. And what about the other Caius? The one we saw in the oh, tower? Oh. He is real. He brought me here. And when we are finished, he will take me away. Hmm. Let's go. Yes, go. And please, let me see a new future. We'll do it. Good. Everyone is smiling. This is the future. I wanted to see. If we're going to fight, we can't afford to have doubts. She's hoping for a better future and believes we can make it. Hmm. <gasps> Look! The fake Caius was sent out from this place. But where's the enemy that you warned us about? <laughs> proto Falci. So this is what you will meant by sentient machine. This thing has been behind everything. It's the one who turned the people into sea, and it's the one who's been trying to kill us in the tower. Oh, y'all, crying about a smiling future. Well, will it be the future ends up is? Because this is a paradox future we're going into. Buff ourselves up, fighting full power, Adam. And he actually is taking HP. Cast Faith and Brave Gut. Alright. Get some healing on quick. Start taking out these manipulators. Oh, no. Wrong guy. Right manipulator. That went down in two seconds. Left manipulator. And on to Proto Falsy Adam. Run that stagger bar up. Oh my god, he does damage compared to like the previous Paradox guys. Of course, we do a lot of damage as well. Get out there, do some more damage. Boost your attack all you like, sir. You're gonna die if you don't watch out. Augusta Tower question 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 AF. It's so funny watching such a big cutscene at the start just to get into such a small battle. Overpowered characters, let's go! The proto Falci reconstructs itself over and over, reaching back from the future to manipulate reality. After an exhausting battle in a virtual arena, Sarah and Noel finally neutralize the seemingly invincible construct. 
the paradox is resolved, and the artificial space-time created by the AI appears to dissolve. But from amid the ensuing stillness, a cold gaze falls upon the victors. Initiate report on Subject Alpha and Subject Beta development program. In the virtual space environment, subjects exhibited high levels of combat effectiveness. Noel Kreis and Sarah Farron were provided with arbitrary goals. Subject's biometric telemetry was released into pre-configured virtual space. For the next phase, the memories of the two subjects have been erased. Biometric data has been transferred to duplicate models in order to conduct real-world combat testing. Understood. I shall obey. Koopa! Mission complete. Return to operations. I wonder if I'll ever be able to find her. Huh? Sarah? I remember... I remember I'm supposed to find someone. Someone important to me. But who? Yeah, I made a promise too. I'm supposed to protect a friend. Repeat. Huh? Subject Alpha and Subject Beta return to operations. The test protocol results are positive. Subject Alpha and Subject Beta completed the mission within expected parameters. The Eden Restoration Project is proceeding according to calculations. However, the possibility of citizen resistance remains. In such cases, Subject Alpha and Subject Beta may be deployed under direction of order preservation protocols. Supplemental note, subjects exhibited temporary memory flux. A distortion occurred within their core mental architecture. The effects of this distortion closely resembled those of a paradox effect. Neural telemetry indicates that elements of chaos from the unseen realm were introduced. Within the subject's mindscape, this caused an anomaly referred to by humans as spirit or heart. Questions for research. Does the human spirit exist? Does a paradox effect lie in the heart of all humans? That was a bit of a grim ending for our heroes there. I guess fighting proto Falsy Adam but not being able to call to hope to stop him building more of himself and stop hope building the project altogether meant that it was a... well, it was definitely going to be a loss. Every time he'd build himself to be more powerful and adapt, and in the end, I guess, Noel and Sarah were completely subjugated and turn into whatever they were. So yeah, paradox endings, usually always bad, aren't they? Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this episode. Hope you didn't mind watching the cutscenes before, because I always think these cutscenes are quite refreshing, quite cool. It's with the short battles that are usually there as well, but that's two more paradox endings. There's four more to go. I'll see you in the future for more. See you around.